and welcome to Autism Hope Library. I am so excited about our next guest. You've probably seen him in other interviews. He's just awesome. I've known him well over a decade. He is the founder of Spectrum Awakening. Dr. Jared Scourn is here. Yay! Hey, everybody. Hey, Kristen. Thanks for having me. I am so excited to see you today. Um, I haven't, you know, because of the whole pandemic, usually we'd see each other in person a few times a year. We haven't seen each other. It feels like forever. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, you know, COVID. It's been a good year and a half since we've all seen each other. Well, it's nice to get to see you, even if it's through the computer. And I'm uh, excited today because we're going to be talking about something that is so important for families. I know every family out there, if you have a child on the spectrum, at some point or another, you're looking at improving language. And so today we're gonna to talk about your clinical experience on improving language. So thank you for being here. I know your schedule's ridiculously busy. So thank you for taking the time out for our families today. Oh, you're welcome. This, this is you know so important because we've got to connect with every family out there that has a kid with autism. You know what, what makes me the saddest is that there's so many families who don't know there's things you can do. You know, they, they send their kids to speech and to OT and that's kind of it. And there's so many other things we can do. So that, you know, you are amazing and wonderful at spreading the word because if a family hears what you have to offer, they can help their kid. And that's all that matters. Well, I have always been impressed with everything that you do to help our community. You have, you're doing it for the right reasons. Your intentions are amazing. And you just happen to be one of the most brilliant doctors that I know. You know, what made you want to get into the autism community? Like, why are you so passionate about helping our families? You know, it's, it's kind of a funny story that, you know, so I've been doing this for 18 years and I'm a clinician, you know, so I'm in my practice day to day to day to day to day. And, you know, one of my first patients, so, you know, when I went into medicine, I went into medicine to be a pediatrician. We didn't even learn about autism. You know, this, again, this was back at the beginning of the 2000s when, when rates were a lot, a lot lower. And one of my, my first, my first kid with autism, she was in a wheelchair. She was very severe. She was in a wheelchair. She had a G tube. She didn't know the difference between me and the wall. And I said, wow, I don't know anything about autism but I do know how we can nutritionally support neurological issues. And so what we did is we, we gave her three supplements. We gave her B vitamins, we gave her magnesium, and we gave her fish oil. And again, this is almost 20 years ago when that kind of stuff was woo woo and French. Mm -hmm. And within a month, she came back in and she was making eye contact with me. And another month she started saying words. And again, she was about 12 and totally nonverbal. She started saying words and then a month later, she was able to go into school. They, she was so severe, she wasn't in any school. So right after that first patient, I said, if I can help somebody knowing nothing, what if I actually knew something? And that has just snowballed, again, almost two decades of being a clinician and helping thousands of families. Six years ago, starting our, our autism vitamin supplement company, Spectrum Awakening. And I haven't turned back and I love it because I love helping kids. I love helping families. And I'm lucky that what I do helps most of them. So what do parents usually ask you to help their children with? Like, what's that, that question? You know, so whenever we, I sit down with, with families, sit down with parents, sit down with a child and we talk about, you know, everything that's going on now. We talk about their whole story and how they got here. But I always try to wrap up with the same question, which is, you know, what are your goals? If you had three, four, five things, what do you really want to see out of your kid? And the number one hands down is speech. Always. The, the first thing, you've got kids, you don't know what they're thinking, you don't know what they're feeling, and the, the parents most of the time say more language or any language if their kid is nonverbal, all right? And there's, there's always other things, there's always general health and Parents thinking about the future, what's going to happen to my kid when they grow up and I'm not here or I can't help them. But number one right here right now is get my child to talk so I can understand what they're thinking and what they're feeling. So when you're getting that question from these families, because I think that's for me, I wish I could just get into my kid's brain. Like I always wish I could just be like, all right, let me go crawl in there and be like, what are you thinking? What's going right. on? And right. so when you're getting that question, you know, obviously, is every child different? Yeah, of course. Yeah, every child is, is different. Every child is unique, not just on how 
they're feeling or how they're presenting, you know, some kids have more language issues, some kids have more sensory issues, some kids have more, you know, motor function issues or seizures. And, you know, they're, they're all different, you know, in that way, you know, some kids really hyper and stimmy and bouncing off the walls and other kids kind of sit in the corner type of thing. I mean, not all, are they different that way, but they're also different internally, you know, and, and my job as the physician is to understand medically what's going on. And autism, and I think this is why, again, after decades and decades, we have not fully solved this autism puzzle. Mm -hmm. and, and that's because it's so complicated and it's got so many moving parts. So again, as a physician, not only do I look at the child and you know, the children and see how they're all different externally, but also internally. You know, and this is where we get to a lot of the nitty gritty medical stuff. And, and we're looking at, at things like genetics and we're looking at things like nutritional deficiencies or, or gut health and diet and yeast infections and parasites, mitochondrial function and autoimmune disease and pandas. Um, but, but the biggest thing that I look at because and it's the biggest thing because it gives me the most improvement with the kids is looking at the brain. Mm -hmm. And when I say looking at the brain, I don't mean like, hey, let's get in an MRI and see what it looks like, because, you know, that really doesn't show us too much in most kids. But the brain runs on different fuel. OK, just like our car, car runs on gas, car runs on oil and antifreeze, needs all these things. Our brain runs on a lot of different chemicals. OK, and these are things we've all heard of, things like serotonin. Serotonin makes me happy and calm and relaxed. Things like adrenaline. Adrenaline's my fight or flight. Um, and there's a bunch more. There's things like dopamine, GABA, and glutamate, norepinephrine, and, and, and there's many more. But those chemicals in the brain, we can test for, we can see what the levels are, and then we can treat it and adjust it and balance it. And again, that's only one piece of a big puzzle, but it's such a huge piece for me with my kids because this is what gets me fast improvements, especially with language. So when you're talking about that, obviously you're talking about brain chemistry and neurotransmitters, you know, can you maybe paint a little bit bigger of a picture of how that's going to help improve language? Is that just by looking at the different supplements that are needed, as you were saying, like serotonin and, you know, whatever that magic chocolate chip cookie recipe is for each child. That's what I always think. I'm like, what's your chocolate chip cookie recipe? Right, right. <laughs> yeah. So you're exactly right. You know, it's, it's about seeing what we have and making sure it's in balance. You know, just like you go to the doctor, you go to your, your PCP and you check your cholesterol. Like, okay, how's my cholesterol? Is it, is it a 180? Is it a 300? Is it a zero? You know, what is it? And when we know what it is, we know what it should be, then, then we're gonna choose the correct treatments to bring it to where it is, because that's where you're gonna be the healthiest. So this is exactly what we do with the kids and their brain chemistries or their neurotransmitters. We can test for these things. We can test for them in the urine, because I know blood draws with most of our kids are impossible or really hard. So you can just collect some urine, collect it in a cup, you send it to your local lab, you know, whether you're, you use Quest or LabCorp or Kaiser or your local hospital, whoever, all of these lab companies will look at these neurotransmitters, look at these brain chemicals, tell you what's going on inside. And the, the great thing is it, it all goes through insurance. So we get these back. And again, just like cholesterol, what we want to do is make sure that everything is where it should be. And the reasons that it can be, you know, too low or too high are really two different things. Number one is nutrition, okay? Because we are what we eat. Every single part of me is made from some food, everything from my skin to my bones, to the chemicals that make my emotions. Why am I happy? Why am I sad? Why am I angry? All that stuff comes from our food, which is kind of pretty amazing when you think about it. So, you know, a lot of our kids are picky eaters and, and there's, there's definitely nutritional deficiencies in a lot of our kids. So we've got to start there. We've got to start there and say, okay, do I have the building blocks of food and nutrition to make these brain chemicals? And the important ones are protein. Number one, protein, protein, protein. And a lot of, you know, some of our kids eat a lot of protein, some don't. And number two, from a nutritional standpoint are different vitamins. So the proteins glue together with the vitamins. The brain takes the proteins, takes the vitamins, <laughs> sticks them together and makes all these chemicals, okay? So if you want a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, you need peanut butter, you need jelly, you need bread, <clears throat> you got, you know? You need something like serotonin. Um, and I say serotonin, that's, that's the one that I get the most language out of when we increase serotonin. You want serotonin, you need certain proteins, 
the one that that's used as tryptophan you know we know that one from turkey and then different vitamins things like folic acid or folate or folinic acid or methylfolate and b12 you, know, you glue them all together and you get serotonin so that's one half of the puzzle the other half of the puzzle is genetics you know we are born with certain genes certain genes that make these chemicals in the brain and certain genes that help get rid of them and you know get take them out of the body so there's there's a little balance in the genetics and how I can do things. Um, and, and a lot of your viewers have probably heard of a really popular gene, MTHFR. MTHFR, or the mother gene, as it's you know hilariously called, um, that's responsible for creating the brain chemicals. So that's an important piece of the puzzle genetically. Not everything, there's more genes involved, but you take those genetics, you take these nutritional deficiencies, and that's what creates this, this kind of level of chemicals in the brain that you know, are really decreasing our kids' language. So that's what we test for and, and bring balance to. Well, you brought up, you know, certain supplements. Um, you know, one of them um, is folinic. And basically when we're looking at that, often we think of leucoverin yeah. um, or leucoverin. I don't, I always get confused. Is it tomato, tomato? Is it leucoverin or leucoverin? I don't know. I've heard it pronounced both ways. So it's okay. Um, so just in case someone is watching or listening, whether you might be watching on our library or you could be listening on our podcast, um, I know that you have a particular supplement that you're seeing, um, being able to replace the leucoverin to have even more increased language. Is that correct? It really is. And I'm kind of flabbergasted by what's been happening. Um, so let me kind of walk your viewers through it and, you know, why, why would we use these things and what does it do? So, you know, one B vitamin that's really important, it was in your prenatals, is folic acid, okay? Mm -hmm. Folic acid or the natural form, which is folate, very important vitamin, very important for the brain, very important for the heart, very important for your blood cells, okay? But you don't use that form in your body. What the body does is it takes that folic acid, and again, that's, that's what was in your prenatal, real important stuff for your nervous system and, you know, making your spinal cord and such. So the, the body takes that folic acid or folate and it starts converting it into different forms and different forms have huge effects in the body. So one of the first forms along that pathway is called folinic acid. Really important for the brain, massively important for the brain. That folinic acid then does get converted through the MTHFR gene to become methylfolate. And that has other good effects in the brain. But it's this folinic acid form that seems to really help a lot of kids with autism with their language. So there's, there's a multitude of research studies that, that, that you know, show that folinic acid really help language, really help our kids, really help development. So we've seen that before, but there's different forms you can use. So folinic acid is registered as a vitamin supplement. So you can go, you can buy it anywhere you want. You know, go to Amazon and get folinic acid, it's easy there is a pharmaceutical form of folinic acid called leucovorin. And they're practically the same thing. So if you've got leucovorin, you've got folinic acid, it's really tomato, tomato. You know, they, they are practically identical. I don't like leucovorin as much because the drug preparation has gluten in it. For most forms, you can get it gluten-free, but you know, that's a concern. But they are identical, they are the same. So what I wanted to do, and this was a year ago when we, when we created it, um, what I wanted to do was get that folinic acid, but get it into the brain better because folinic acid has to cross two bridges to get into our brain. Number one has to be absorbed from the intestines into the bloodstream, floats around, gets to the brain, has to go across the blood brain barrier from the bloodstream into the actual neurons to have an effect. So I wanted to build a better mousetrap. So I, I was researching and, you know, looking at scientific articles and such, and I came across a PhD from Cornell and her specialty is folinic acid. Like that's her life, that's all she does. She's the brainiac of, the, uh, of our country in folinic acid. So I got to meet, I, I didn't meet with her, but I, I had a call with her and I said, hey, I want to help more people with this stuff. I wanna help more kids. How does that vitamin get across those bridges? It's something called the folate receptor, okay? How do I get it across those bridges better? She said, oh, there's a lot of research about this and that and the other thing. And I said, this is amazing. Why hasn't someone put it all together in one formula? It's, it's, almost, it's almost like a chaperone. 
Okay, you, you've got somebody who just kind of takes this folinic acid and be like, all right, this way, sir, we're going over here, right into the brain to help. So we put it all together in one formula and we launched it last year. And I am just amazed at the number of kids that improve their language in a matter of weeks. And these are kids who had done leucomorin before or done folinic acid solo before. So all we've done, I mean, it's not, again, it's not rocket science, but if you can give all the parts together, the peanut butter, the jelly, and the bread all together, we've got the folinic acid and we've got three other nutrients all in the same formula. You take them simultaneously, it just escorts it into the bloodstream, escorts it into the brain. And again, all that theory is great, but I just love to hear the stories of parents who are like, my kid is talking, we got more words, the speech therapist is amazed, the school's in love. It's awesome. I, I, I'm so ecstatic and I'm so happy that I met this you know, researcher from Cornell. Is yours in a capsule form or is it in a powder form? Great question. So when we launched Spectrum Awakening six years ago, my goal was to have the majority of kids to be able to take most of our supplements, okay? It's tough sometimes with production, what you can do. So we try to make most of our things as powders and we try to make everything as tasteless as possible or maybe a little sweet, but we understand the kids have sensory issues and are picky eaters and you know, how many supplements have you as parents thrown away and you got closets full of this stuff that your kid won't take. So it is a powder and it's a sweet flavor. So you could take it straight up and it almost tastes like sugar. There's no sugar in it, but it almost tastes like sugar. Um, and, but you can mix it in any kind of food or any kind of drink. Do you have to separate it between like, let's say some of our kids are on seizure meds or CBD or any of that kind of stuff, or can you give it whenever? You can give it whenever. And you know what? I'm glad you brought up seizures because I wanted to tell you a, a, a clinical story. Um, there's a, a patient of mine from Oregon and he was, he had 30 seizures a day on the max dose of Keppra, which is a seizure med, mm -hmm. you know, very popular seizure med. Still had 30, 30 seizures a day with the max dose of the seizure med. We gave him our folinic acid because there's research folinic acid helps with epilepsy and seizures. Within a week, he went down from 30 to zero. Wow. Insane. And I mean, I, I wanna have the fine print like on the Weight Watchers commercials, don't expect to lose 50 pounds in an hour. But, but what can happen is huge. That was the missing piece to his puzzle. Right. for that particular issue. Yeah, yeah I, I was blown away. On the bottle, does it have a recommended dose based on weight or based on age or just is it just recommended dose per individual or how does that work? Well, you know, everybody's different. So what we normally start at, the, the normal starting dose for, for folinic acid is 800 micrograms, okay? So that's, you know, let's, let's round that up to one milligram, okay? So let's say one milligram is good starting dose. But that's why we have as a, powder, as a powder, you can titrate it and give more, you can give less. Compared to leucovorin, you know, leucovorin can be given at 5, 10, 15, even 20 milligrams. So again, the leucovorin, 20 milligrams, is going to be saying 20 milligrams of clinic acid. We've got kids who have done 20 milligrams of leucovorin and are seeing more benefits on one milligram of our folinic wow. formula. Again, just because it's getting escorted into the brain better. So that it's, is fantastic, Jared. I'm excited about this. You know, I wish. See, this all would happen when I don't talk to you for a year. I didn't even know about this. <laughs> hey, we got a Zoom more. Yes. Oh my gosh. I know parents that are listening. We've all, you know, if you're in the biomedical community, if you're not, then this might be brand new to you, which is so awesome that you're learning about it. If you have been in the biomedical community slash supplement slash diet slash, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, um, you know, you've heard of folinic acid, you've heard of leucovorin. And so um, a lot of our kids, including my son, have been on a compound pharmacy one. You just made it like this huge red flag go off in my head when you said gluten. I'm like, okay, I'm pretty sure the compound pharmacy knows better. But now I'm like, as soon as this is this interview is done, I'm going to be like, hello, um, I just need to make sure. I got to like, double, like, double check. You got it. Yes. And you know, people that are watching or listening, you're probably thinking the same thing as me. You probably already pushed pause and called your compounding pharmacy. But yeah, um, as you're watching or listening. So I'm, I'm really excited about this, Jared. I think it's absolutely phenomenal. And how do people find your website? Like, we're going to have it here on the bottom of the screen if you're watching, but if you're listening on our podcast, I want people to be able to find you. All right. So we've got one major website right now. It's spectrumawakening.com. Okay. So spectrumawakening.com is going to get access to everything that I do. And, and there's basic, you know, I wear three major hats, you know, number one, and most important, I'm a clinician. 
okay? I am in my office seeing patients. We are telemedicine. 90% of my day, especially because of COVID, is telemedicine. I talk to people all over the country. I talk to people internationally. We've talked to people in Canada and Europe and Africa and in Asia and Australia. So anywhere you got a computer and a Wi-Fi signal, we can talk. Number two, we've got the whole supplement line. We have over 50 different supplements and you can get lab tests on there. So if you want an O test or a genetic test, whatever, we've got it on there as well. Excuse me. And then our third umbrella is education. So I've been develop developing different educational modules, some of them for free, some of them at a cost. And we're, we're building a whole big autism one this year. But we do have a free course just on thalinic acid. So if yeah. you want to learn more about, about this formula that we have that's working amazing, again, it doesn't work for everybody. Nothing works for everybody. But um, you, know, you can go through there, hit our education tab, and find the course and watch it for free. So spectrumawakening.com. Spectrumawakening.com. If you guys are listening on the podcast, if you're watching, you see it on the screen. And if you're not looking at the screen, you're just listening, you just heard us say it five times. So spectrumawakening.com. Um, and I love the fact that you guys are having education now. Uh, Dr. Jared is also on Facebook. I see him on a lot of lives and I see a lot of parents asking questions during that live. And he answers them. I mean, like that always blows my mind. I'm like watching you do your thing. And then there'll be like 20 questions, like boom, 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 boom. And you will be like, okay, hold on. Let me answer this question. Okay. Let me answer this question. And so that's what I love about you. I mean, I just think that like, I, I don't know. I've obviously I'm biased for people watching because I've known him for a long time, but he's just a really great person. And typically I don't surround myself with anybody who I don't think is a great person. So if you've been in my life this long, there must be a reason well, <laughs> for it. Very now, awesome. for all the people that are listening and watching, what do you want every parent with uh, a child with autism of any age to know? And I, I want to emphasize any age because right. so many of our kids could be two but they could be 52. And, yeah. and Jared, you and I have talked about this for many, many times. You, there is no age limit of how, when and how you can help your child. So, you know, what message do you, or what do you want the, the families to know? So number one, and most important, there is an answer for your child please try everything. Still have hope. If you, if your pediatrician has told you, just put your kid in a home. If your family members have told you, forget about it, there's nothing you can do. Ignore them, ignore the naysayers. There is so much to do. There's so much that we as physicians are, are helping our kids with. Scientific researchers are out there researching things. There's so much more today than there was five years ago, never mind 20 years ago when I started. So please try everything, try anything. There's, there is hope out there. You can talk to all these different families through Autism Hope Alliance that there are things to help kids. So please try anything you can. I love that message. Well, thank you so much for being here. I learned so much. I always do. Um, you're just, just amazing in everything that you do. And, you know, thank you as a parent of a child with autism. Thank you for, you know, sticking around and like learning more and helping. I mean, you've helped thousands and thousands and thousands of families around the world and you've made yourself accessible to where it does not matter where you live. And I want families to know that like he does telemedicine and that is so hard to find. And the fact that he's doing it and he's doing it every day, just helping our kiddos. I mean, that's just huge. So thank you, Jared, for being here. Thank you for not giving up. And thank you for reminding us that there is hope. And I guess that's like the, the best thing we can ask for. <laughs> that is so, and thank you for having me here. And again, thank you for all the families listening. You know, I'm, I'm a father. I got a, an eight-year-old girl. And, you know, we do as much as we can for our kids. That's all that matters. So please reach out to any of us. We are here. This is our life. This is what we do. This is what we love to do. We're here to help you and your family and your kids. So please reach out. Thank you. And thank you all for listening and watching. Until next time. Bye, guys. Bye.